I wish it was about table tennis because mm -hmm. it would have meant that I was good at table tennis, but I'm really not. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, I want to talk today about the co-working culture, which I think that is really important, especially for our industry uh, as workers people. So, as usual, first of all, something about myself. I'm Franz Vitulli. I work at HumanMade. Um, as usual, Twitter handle, website, and stuff like that. Um, what defines me uh, from a lifestyle point of view, more than a professional, I think, uh, is that I am a location-independent individual. So, as a location-independent individual, I get the chance to choose the place where to work from, because my job allows me to do so. So, for example, you can see this is the living room at my house, or airport lounge, uh, swimming pool, Wi-Fi wasn't really great, but you know, it was good for out offline stuff. Co-working space. So, um, I'm working at Human Made for not for two years now. For the first year in my career at Human Made, I decided to work from home, come from a completely different industry where I had to go to a place, where I had to go to a place. How many people here go to places and they're kind of forced to do that because it's their office and they cannot be somewhere else? Yeah. How many people here work from home? Okay, so good ratio. I like that. Um, so, as I was saying, in my first year at Human Made, I decided to work from home. Coming from a completely different industry, I was forced to go to the office, and I was free to not go into the office, so I was like, yeah, okay, let's do this. Let's work from home. PJ all day. I mean, nothing bad about it, of course. And uh, at some point I was thinking that my isolation I was living into was like disconnecting me from the reality around me. I live in London, so there's a lot of things to do. Commuting is terrible in London, but you know, even experiencing the bad things about the city where you live in, I think, is in a way a good thing. So after one year, I decided to make the switch and go to a co-working uh, co space. I didn't know anything about co-working spaces, so everything that I actually learned about co-working spaces, I learned it on the field, the hard way. Watching other people, uh, how other people work and get their stuff done, uh, making mistakes probably, I don't know. Uh, you should ask my co-workers, co-working space, about this. <laughs> so at some point I decided to, to do this switch. So what is a co-working space? Uh, how many people here have uh, worked from a co-working space? Okay, so you probably know what, what we're talking about. So unlike a typical traditional office space where everyone belongs to the same company and where everyone belongs to the same, probably to the same department, they are like working together towards a single goal. In a co-working space, uh, there are people, there are people belonging to different organizations and different backgrounds different kind of professionals. Um, I think that there are three major typical customers for co-working spaces, which are distributed team members, freelancers, and startup and small businesses. Um, uh, they are all businesses that in some way um, involve relatively, a, a relative isolation, I would say, especially distributed team members. You work on your own, even if you have your work bodies somewhere else in the world, but you are essentially alone. It was, it was what was happening to me when I was at the beginning of my history with Human Made. Distributed team, of course, are on the rise. They are big, big uh, cliche, I would say, in the WordPress industry right now. Uh, from automatic, more than 300 distributed team members. Um, if this is possible, it's of course thanks to dedicated hubs, such as, for example, Slack. Or Trello, Hackbar, uh, or applications that trying to connect all the people that work on the same projects. Um, and this, in this way, of course, you take uh, the location out of the hiring equation. So you can um, hire the biggest talents in in, in your field uh, without without necessarily look into a single town. Let's think, for example, at Sweden. Um, I know that distribution of the population is not linear in Sweden, 
So if there's someone who is at the top of, of his game in a city that is not that big, he, thanks to the distributed workforce, he can still aim to work in a big company. Um, such as Omatic or Human Made. There are so many other um, teams. This is my company work for Human Made. This is a picture that we took at Tarifa in southern Spain in our retreat. Um, I mentioned that I work here, I haven't talked about it, but really quickly want to talk about it. We are um, work as VIP, VIP partner agency, uh, and in this uh, kind of company culture, as I was saying, we are not alone. There are other companies that we all know, I think, from Treehouse to Basecamp, Coffee Blogger, GitHub, I think everyone here uses GitHub. Um, I wouldn't say that distributed companies are outnumbering the traditional uh, way to work, but I'm quite sure that if you see the quality of this company, they are all influential for us. They're all like role models. Freelancing. Freelancing is another... Freelancers are, are the typical customers of uh, working places, and freelancing is hugely on the rise too. According to some uh, human resources experts in, in the United States, in five years from now we're going from one-third of the American workforce to half of the American force, workforce as um, independent contractors or consultants, so freelancing is on the rise too. And also startups, of course. I don't even think that I need to explain anything here. If you're anything like me, I'm, so, I'm subscribed, for example, to Product Hunt uh, newsletter. You know that there are new products every day on the market. So new products, most of the time, means new startups, new, new millennials, new kids that gather together and try to make the web and probably the world a better place. So it's a natural con consequence, in my opinion, that the co-working industry is booming. Take WeWork, for example. WeWork is a company that, whose, whose mission is offering even small players the opportunity to work in one of, one of those big, massive, super high fashion um, workspace, such as the ones that we usually see on uh, Mashable or TechCrunch, you know, the new Google place in London or the new Facebook place in San Francisco. Um, WeWork has been uh, has received recently a 355 million dollar of investment, and it's valued now at a five billion dollars company. So that tells me that co-working spaces are not going anywhere. Are here to stay. So as humans, since we know how to behave in certain places, we know how to behave how to behave in a restaurant. We know how to behave in a traditional office. We need to get more familiar with a space like this. So, what a co-working space can really do for you? Um, it's a, usually it's a two ways um, thing. We need to give something to the co-working space industry, the rent of course, the monthly fee, <laughs> but also the co-working space need to do something for you. And co-working space actually I think that does so many things for, for you. For example, first one, it gives you a ready office, of course. Many of us want to build their own battle station, their own cave. Best monitors on the market, best office chair on the market. Uh, but many of us actually want <coughs> other people to make that decision. They just want a decent place where, the, where they want to fire up their laptops, get their job done. Um, and I think that the co-working space are pretty good at that. So just a quick uh, chapter inside this point, what I think is the survival kit for the co-working space. Uh, a backpack, of course, uh, needs to be superstar in mine, for, mine, for example, is um, carry-on compatible, so I can go for business trips and bring in my workstation everywhere with me. Of course, laptop, laptop and smartphone. What is the choice? For me, I'm a marketing person, I'm not a developer, I'm not a designer, so my, my weapons of choice is the mouse, probably. Uh, <laughs> uh, but of course, if you are a designer, you can use, you can bring your graphic table, whatever. Uh, headphones. Better if um, noise cancelling because most of co-working spaces have, have music and chances are you don't like the music. And of course, by the way, <laughs> headphones at co-working spaces are a huge do not disturb signal. So if you see someone with, with a headphone, just don't talk to him. Building is on fire, building is on fire the, he chose to die. Just don't talk to him. It happened to me. And it's really 
cables and power adapters, of course, don't forget them. Some extra stuff, food and snacks, do yourself a favor and your wallet a favor. Don't go and go to McDonald's, bring your own food. Uh, toothbrush and toothpaste, of course. You need to pitch fresh ideas to investors. Um, sleeping mask, I really love this. I'll show you. Uh, it should have it here. Yes. So, I really like this. Switch off my brain when I need to, after I've been plugged, like, and after I've done something for my job. Disconnect for five minutes. I'm a fan of the Pomodoro technique, which says, like, every 25 minutes, I think, if I remember correctly, just switch off everything. Do yourself this favor. Take a, I wouldn't say take a nap, but, you know, take a quick break. Just go and get a cup of coffee. Some other things that co-working space can do for you. It might help you to find new prospect. Now, if you work for a WP company, whether you offer development, consultancy, or if you build themes and have a theme marketplace with the plugins, the other people in the co-working space might do something else, like build I don't know, iPhone applications. <coughs> and might need someone like you to help them with their own website. So it can help you. I, I mean, from I've been working in at WeWork for like one year now, and I've sent to my developer friends at least 10 different jobs. I mean, those are 10 opportunities that I wouldn't have had if I wasn't there. And by the way, stick it out. Because I found the opportunities because people come to me and say, hey, you, do you work with WordPress? Yes, I do. So stickers help. It's not just fashion. It's because they, they, tell, they tell other people who you are. Networking without networking. Uh, I have a confession <laughs> right here. I hate the whole idea of networking. Because in my opinion, it like, uh, involves this whole idea of seeing other people like working business opportunities for and I, I really don't like that. I'm interested in other people's stories. I'm interested in what other people have to say to me. So being a working space usually helps you to connect with other people, to, to create real connection, not just you know, in, the, in the hope that maybe two years from now they can remember about me if there's an opening in their company. I don't really believe that. Uh, that's probably my pet peeve, but I really don't like that whole idea. Uh, I, really, I really believe in making genuine connections. Um, games, table tennis, as I, as I was saying before. So again, uh, if you take break breaks, being involved in a recreational activity like uh, football or table tennis helps you making those connections that helps you live a better life, um, getting out from that relative isolation I was talking about before, um, so if you if you say yeah I have Xbox at, Xbox at home think again because those mm -hmm. games are helping you find new people and perhaps new friends. Meeting rooms. Um, if you have a startup, if you are, if you are a small team and you usually don't have too much money to spend in a in a regular office, um, if you decide to go to that route and um, invest some money in a regular office. You probably rent an office with a uh, meeting room. And everyone, every startup at some point needs to meet prospects, potential partners, investors. And chances are that you're probably gonna rent uh, an office that has a meeting room, but you're not gonna use it every day, so just, just pay for it without using it. At co-working space, you usually uh, pay for the meeting rooms by hour. So, you know, just if you use them, you're going to pay for them. Otherwise, you're not going to pay for them. And that's also my thing. Especially meeting potential investors or partners in a professional setting will help you to, you know, establish your brand as a professional one, not just meeting someone, you know, at your house or, I mean, there's nothing wrong with your house, of course, but uh, not for, not for, I think, not for meeting this millionaire that wants to give you some money. Uh, um, so yeah, meeting rooms are really, really important for your business. And at the co-working space, you're going to pay for them only if you actually use them. Professional development. So in a normal, I would say, in a work, no, normal company where everyone works in the same office, 
usually get professional development either by a mentor inside the company or by what you want to explore, let's say, so books that you want to read or uh, webzines or magazines, I don't know. In co-working spaces, you usually double up your chances to get a real professional development because they usually organize seminars, master classes, and out of the blue, one day you go to, to work and uh, during your lunch break, you can, for example, listen to this guy who's talking about Excel. I mean, I hate Excel, but in that case, it really helped me with some tips, so it was pretty good. Uh, but anyway, those professional development opportunities you wouldn't really have if you work in just one office. So from your company, if you are a distributed member team, a team member like me, from our, if your company, you get the traditional professional development, but from a co-working space, you get some extra opportunities, which is, I think, pretty good. Um, co-working holidays. Uh, the Guardian, you know, the British newspaper, calls, call them co-working holidays. I'm not really a fan of the expression because they're not holidays. So, essentially, thanks to the rise of the co-working spaces, they are, like, everywhere around the world, even in some pretty sweet spots. Um, if you want to travel while working, uh, you can like ma manage and negotiate some deals with some co-working spaces around, um, around the world. <coughs> and every, everywhere you go, you always have some professional place where to get stuff done, not just coffee shops or friends' houses or Airbnb apartments. For example, this is the surf office, surfoffice.com. <coughs> Even without going to Thailand or some exotic places, surf office is in. Uh, they have two locations in Europe. They have Lisbon and Gran Canaria, in Canarias, Spain. Uh, they're really good because they combine, uh, they somehow combine surf school, co-working space, and hotel. So you can just rent a bed, uh, have the right to sit in their, uh, in their working area, and then you can go surf with your co-working space buddy, which, is, uh, which I think is pretty awesome. Uh, Mutinery.org. Uh, it's in the French countryside, uh, so it's really beautiful if you are not fun of the surf but, or, or the sea, but you want to like, breathe some fresh air. I mean, it's not really a big problem, that one in Sweden, uh, but if you live in London, you know, sometimes you just want to stop breathing the smog. Uh, coconut space in Berlin, uh, they actually set up tents for people who want to go there. Pretty cool. The sand there, you can just gather around with your friends and, you know, have working retreats, stuff like that with your team. Last but not least, uh, the community, which I think is really probably the most important thing in a co-working space, because otherwise you can just stay at home, as I was saying before. The community is really important. It helps you. Of course, you might, you might want to help the communities. If you think about it, it's just like the WordPress community. You use WordPress to make yourself a living and you give back to the community organizing work camps or contributing to the core, contributing to translations. Uh, even at, at the community of the co-working space you can give back. So how do you give back? First of all organize meetup. Uh, if you are part of the user of a user group of a WordPress me a meetup in your city and you're struggling, uh, find a place where to where to where to meet? Uh, usually, meetups like meetup meetup groups go to pubs or universities. But you can go to a co-working space, and it's actually a triple win. The co the co-working space wins because it gets some free marketing. Your user group friends win because they might be looking for a co-working space, and you just give them a, a, a co-working space. And of course, the user group wins because it has. Uh, a stable and tech-friendly environment where to host the meetup. Organize a seminar. As I was saying before in the <coughs> professional development <laughs> slide, um, you, you really often at a working space get the chance to attend seminars, but you can also organize one. Make sure that each and every one of us, of you guys, uh, are expert in something. If you, if you go to a co-working space to work, you can propose to, to, to arrange, I don't know, a seminar or masterclass about what 
about the thing that you are expert of, and also share the little things in everyday life. I don't know, uh, I found the perfect coffee machine at my working place, I call it the France. I'm not waiting for the people calling it the France, but you know, I'll share that with them. So, uh, to wrap things up, if we are asking ourselves this question, how can we be productive in a co-working space, I really think we are asking ourselves the wrong question, because co-working spaces are already there for you, for us to be productive. I think the question we need to ask ourselves here is how can we maximize the co-working space <coughs> experience? How can we help the co-working culture grow and how the co-working how the growth of the co-working culture can help us. And I think that, I, I hope that what I just shared with you answered this question. Thank you. I hope that makes sense in here. Perfect. Awesome. Questions? Yes, question. Yeah. Yeah, like we, we talked about yesterday, but like the biggest problem um, like the biggest benefit of actually going to an office is that you uh, you take away um, the risk of miscommunication. Yes, very yes. much. Because uh, like when when people when things go wrong, it's usually not because people are not skilled enough, mm -hmm. and it's not because I mean uh, everyone wants to do a great job, right? Yes, sure. But but it's it's due to a miscommunication and, yes. uh, or, or lack of communication or yes. somehow or, or um, uh, and if you have a, like a close proximity to the people you work on uh, and uh, you, you can just you know peep their screen and like uh, no is this really what we were talking about you know yeah. uh, that is the main how do you how do you how do you translate that into a, uh, this model yeah this is a really good question I think and I can briefly describe how we solve this at Human Made. Uh, I mean, with the rise of distributed team, of course, there's an explosion of products for distributed teams. So, first of all, I would say, of course, luck, uh, but also Trello, Hackpad, uh, there are P2s. For example, there's a really interesting article uh, from Matt Malewag, CEO of Automatic. Uh, about how the P2 websites save automatic. Uh, so, for those of you who don't know, P2 is a WordPress theme, and uh, <coughs> um, the uh, post editor is actually on the front end, so you can write things on these internal sites. This site, these P2 sites are meant to be internal, and other people can add their comments. So, for example, we at uh, made have several internal web, uh, websites like this, so we we, we try to stay in touch as much as we can, so we, we use Screen Hero for really quick screen sharing, uh, so that that should you know replace probably the glance at the other at the work body screen, um, or Trello and Basecamp mainly for project management and mm, Trello especially. Trello helps us because you know um, in the previous um, talk from Eric. I think, um, he was talking about images uh, on websites. Um, Trello is really visual as soon, so it, it, it helps us a lot to 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 control the project uh, and, um, in, the, in the way it's you know running and going towards its end. So I think that I I think it's safe to say that products today make that possible to avoid and minimize uh, misunderstanding, miscommunications. I think that if you are not there, we're actually pretty close, I think. From my experience, it, it's like that. So a lot of uh, software. Yeah, software. Right. And, you know, these days, most of these applications are online, so are just on the browser. Uh, yes, Nicholas. Uh, are you... Do you, you have uh, head office as well? Is that yes, we do. Uh, yeah. We do one main office in Matlock in Derbyshire. Yeah. Uh, How many work, are working there? Three or four. Okay. Three or four are just there. Uh, essentially, Tom, our CEO, um, office manager. Yeah. Do they communicate internally with the 
uh, with the same tools that your the rest of you do, uh, well, or is there some communication that? Um, is... I I wouldn't say that they there's a real advantage between them. Oh. Uh, I wouldn't say that personally. Uh, I mean, uh, this is quite funny. I I see some some sometimes then like asking yourself. Uh, hey, I'm going to that coffee shop. Do you want a cup of coffee? Like, <laughs> instead of chatting, yeah, yeah. you know, because most of the time where, where people are like super plugged in what they are doing, super focused, they are wearing headphones again, even in, in a real office, you know, I mean, real, you know, traditional office, you know, that might be quicker than going there and asking the guy to take the word, the headphones off. So, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, I don't, I don't really see any. Advantage no. internally. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot.